request Shri uh, Mati S. Radha Chauhan, Secretary DOPT, to deliver her welcome, welcome speech. Mananiya Uparashrupati Mahodeji. Mananiya Dr. Sudesh Dhankar Mahodeya. Sachiv Uparashrupati Mahode. सर ये 2020 बैच के आईएएस अधिकारी आपके सामने हैं इनकी ओर से और कार्मिक और प्रशिक्षण विभाग की ओर से मैं अपना हार्दिक अभिनंदन स्वागत और आभार व्यक्त करती हूं सर कि आपने अपने बहुत व्यस्त समय में से इस कार्यक्रम के लिए हम लोगों को ये आपसे मिलने का अवसर प्रदान किया सर ये कार्मिक और प्रशिक्षण विभाग का असिस्टेंट सेक्रेटरी का प्रोग्राम ये युवा आईएएस अधिकारी जो मसूरी के एकेडमी से फेस टू पूरा करके आते हैं सर और ये ऑन देर वे टू स्टेट कार्डर्स हैं अब इनका प्रशिक्षण खत्म और ये पूरी तरह से एक अधिकारी बनके अपने राज्यों में जाने से पूर्व इनको हम भारत सरकार में एक राष्ट्रीय एक्सपोजर देते हैं सर ये बात सर माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के एक विजनरी इनिशिएटिव है जिसमें दो से सर हमने ये कार्यक्रम शुरू किया जिसमें 2013 के बैच के अधिकारियों के साथ साथ सर 2014, 15, 17, 18 तक हमारे हर बैच के अधिकारियों को ये एक एक्सपोजर का सेंसिटाइजेशन का ओरिएंटेशन का एक अवसर प्रदान होता है सर वेर दे सी दी हाईएस्ट लेवल ऑफ डिसीजन मेकिंग हाउ वी इंटरेक्ट एंड डायलॉग विद द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स उसके क्या क्या डिसीजन मेकिंग प्रोसेस के नुआंसेस क्या हैं, क्या क्या पेचीदगी है इन सभी का इनको सर एक फर्स्ट लेवल एक्सपोजर इस तेरह सप्ताह का ये कार्यक्रम है सर ये जुलाई में आए थे और अक्टूबर छह को इनको ये सात को खत्म हो जाएगा सर ये तेरह हफ्ते का इस बार ये अपने स्टेट इसके बाद जाएंगे सो दिस इज अ वेरी क्रिटिकल टाइम वेन दे आर एक्सपोज टू डिसीजन मेकिंग एट दी नेशनल लेवल which will carry them in a very significant way in performing in the states that they are allocated to, which they'll be soon joining. So this 175 uh, IS officers who are here is my engineering background wale 108 our probationers hai, and now that they are full-time officers. Other than the engineering background, they are medical graduates, there are management graduates and of course humanities is a very significant input with which most of them come to this uh, card also. Sir, like I said, it's a very, very innovative initiative of the government of India with a very, very long lasting impact in the way the officers will go on to perform in the next more than three decades of their service. So, this is a very capacity building efforts ka bahut, bahut ahem initiative hai. And they are being groomed to take on leadership from the first day they are going to go to the state governments and start taking on their responsibilities. And in that study, we have given them a lot of exposure with experts, specialists. And with this, you have the opportunity to meet the President of India, sir, to interact with him, and to interact with him. And in that study, sir, this is a very important part of today's study, where you have to meet them. And in your mind, you will get the opportunity to listen to him. We all of you, sir, I would like to thank you very much, sir, that you have given us this time. And I am sure that we will all benefit from this time. And I am sure that we will all benefit from this time. And I am sure that we will all benefit from this time this interaction and guidance that we'll receive from you in this event. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request Honorable Vice President of India to address the gathering. Greetings to all of you. And the journey you have traversed so far 
will impact minimum three generations of your respective families. It is the proudest moment, not only for you, but for your parents, relatives, and friends. The entire ecosystem around your families and friends must have been absolutely brightened when they came together that you are on way to becoming officials in this category. I am grateful to Madam S. Radha Chauhanji for affording me this rare opportunity to interact with minds, brilliant minds, who will shape the destiny of this country. Secretary to Vice President Sunil Gupta ji, 1987 batch IS officer and Radha Chauhan ji, 1988, Sunil ji 87. I think most of you may not have been born at that time. But it is a rewarding moment for Sunil ji, a little setback to me. He is from IIT Kanpur and large fleet is from engineering background. <laughs> you are wearing black coat, most of you, but none is wearing a lawyer's gown. I belong to a fraternity which is absent here. <clears throat> that reflects the current scenario. Another highly important is emerging presence of the female gender. I have held this view for a very long time, not because me and Dr. Sudesh are only a daughter, but on objective parameters that their presence contributes to the sublimity and wholesomeness of the system for a variety of reasons. My congratulations to every one of you. Having been Governor of the State of West Bengal for three years, I have come together two things in particular. One, the challenges the Governor suffers but more important, the challenges that the bureaucracy faces. Wherever I had been to State of West Bengal, <coughs> young officers, dynamic officers, I love to interact with them. Dr. Sudesh Dankhadi is witness. There were occasions when brilliant young minds in the lounge came very close to shedding tears. It was the comfort which we both provided that at young age you are not in a position sometimes to withstand the onslaughts which the law does not permit. I will appeal to all of you never to be emotive about it. Because the challenges you will face are the challenges that emanate for the entire country. If you carefully go through the rules of 1968 and read them and live by them right from day, day one, I am sure you will be spinally very, very strong. Your conscience will be very clear. When you will go to a particular place now, after this exposure, don't be surprised if the old war horses who happen to be your subordinates try to generate an ecosystem where you may find yourself at, your, at their disposal. 
This is something which you have to keep in mind. You are especially cut out because you have passed the most stringent test, I say, on the planet. You have been extremely lucky to be in this scenario. You have been trained by minds that know India better than anyone else. They have lived through the governance. I would advise all of you to focus on two books in particular. One is Final Diagnosis. Go to the last few pages only and you will come to know the wisdom of experience and exposure. Many young officials may contemplate thinking that the approach of Mrs. S. Radha Chauhan or Mr. Sunil Gupta leaves some to be desired, ignoring that they have lived through all these years. They have seen governance from very close quarters. They have faced challenges and their emphasis always has been how to find wholesome resolution and therefore always believe in your seniors. It is very easy a drop of a hat to have a perception or some kind of emerging conception about the senior. Never lose sight of it that your senior will not reveal the challenges he or she faces. So your seniors are your guiding force every time. They are the lighthouse. Anyone who is subordinate to you, you may come into picture when there is insubordination. Otherwise, concept of subordinate does not gel well with the governance. You have to work in tandem and togetherness right from the employee who may be class D or class 4. He must have respect for you for the reason that you are having respect for him or her. If you establish that reciprocal relationship, I can tell you it will be very rewarding for you, your work, and you will be able to discharge the obligations of your office very effectively. One thing which I have noticed and with concern, that right from the day one, there is a concept of posting. And a perception is generated, this post is more important than the other post. Have it from me. Whatever position you occupy, if you discharge your obligations faithfully and with dedication, you will find that position is more important than any other position. Ordinary people will look at you with the highest of respect. For them, you are virtually a dream. They will immediately hold you in high esteem. You will have to suffer certain air pockets. If you travel in a small plane and there is an air pocket, then the feeling you know, soul upar hai, body niche hai, you will get it. You will be exposed to experiences and conduct of others which may shake your mind and heart and generate a feeling of dejection and desperation. Never do that. That is not your weakness. That is weakness of the other person. Anyone in any authority whatsoever, political or otherwise, may not be that sensitive to the requirements of law or democratic principles. But by virtue of your position, you are trained minds to deal with those difficult situations and negotiate those rough curves 
diligently, confidently, but always, <coughs> always courteously. You would find that even for senior officials, finding there are transgressions, certain protocol guidelines have been issued and they mostly emanate from the department which Madam S. Radha Chauhan occupies. That how should you be dealing with members of parliament, members of the assembly? Never go behind the person who is holding the post of MP or MLA. Never. The moment you go to that extent, perhaps your response may be flawed. Deal with the person, with the office he or she is holding, and it will give you respite, both from embarrassment and some kind of anxiety. More the challenges, more bright you will come out. I am happy to be associated with this program. The training which you get and these things are relevant. But what is more relevant and is finally very strong is your inner confidence, your own intellect. <clears throat> Never give up the urge to equip yourself about the knowledge of the subject you have to grapple with. The moment you become <coughs> knowledgeable about a subject, fully informed of the fact situation, you will be fully in the gear to exploit your potential and that of others also. Wherever you can engage in hand-holding, Wherever you can play a role, <clears throat> affirmatively, to help the people at large, that should be done. Of late I have noticed, with due respect to Madam, that some officials have become victim of publicity. Publicity hunting is natural to certain categories, including politicians. I am not free from this criticism. I am required to defend on a number of occasions why as Governor of the State of West Bengal I was engaged in what is known as tweeting. That was compulsive. But respect media, I think none from the media is here except Sunset TV. Am I right, sir? <coughs> Otherwise, <coughs> well, without reflecting to media, I have always been concerned with naked electric wire. If you touch it, you suffer. So take care of it. <coughs> Wherever you go, and certainly I am not referring to Dr. Sudesh Dankar. It should not be so misunderstood. <laughs> so, never hesitate, never, ever, to follow the dictate of law. I'll give a small illustration. Right to Information Act is a revolutionary legislation that gives entitlement to every citizen of the country to get some inputs, facts from any organization. If you ever are required to deal with it, never engage into concealing or putting things under the carpet. There can never be resolution of a problem unless there is a proper diagnosis of it. And diagnosis can take place only when the entire fact situation is before it. During my days, during the days of Madam Chauhan and Sunil Guptaji, X-ray was the ultimate thing. <clears throat> now, has anyone heard of X-ray? They talk of MRI. So you will have to graduate 
into a generational change. The world is changing very fast. Maybe most of you would know, in the villages, no marriage ceremony could take place unless there was VCR. Do we see it now? Has anyone seen VCR? Even Raddiwala will not take it for 100 rupees. The industry had to change itself. There were accolades for the Indian government and the minister for having telephone booths. Have you seen them now? We, on this side, minus madam because she is younger, <laughs> have lived through a regime when we had no internet, no TV channels, no social media. We had to depend on mechanical typewriters. And writing a letter was the only mode to communicate. So much so that some Indian movies have also been made on Chitti Ai. That, does that take place? No. The world will change much more than what you see today. Social media has claimed bureaucracy wickets more than anything else. I don't want to go into the merit or demerit of that, but they have projected hugely a conduct of a district magistrate, a police superintendent, and that becomes indefensible because no one will ever care to go into the background of it. And therefore you have to be extremely watchful. My young friends, we are living in times where there is no secret. Every secret is an open secret. Every deliberation that, that takes place behind closed doors is not secret. While I was a member of parliament in 89 and a minister in the union government, R.K. Lakshman came out with a cartoon and that cartoon was a meeting of the cabinet members was taking place and one of the members rose. The other one said, can't you leak after five minutes? Now, you don't have to leak in physical form. And you can never be sure that your office is sanitized. No one knows it more than the person who holds office of governor in the state of West Bengal. <laughs> so you will have to be extremely, extremely extremely watchful. Number two, innovation and ease of governance is often talked about. But when you will do it, you will face some difficulties that there has to be this procedural compliance, that procedural compliance, and the delay will result in painful delay for the person who has to benefit out of it. So carefully examine well-meaning governmental schemes that affirmatively take care of the citizen. You must come forward. Aggression is the weakest human faculty. Anyone who is in aggression indicates to the world at large that I need to get my mental faculties little uploaded or strengthened. So aggression is something of which none of you have a right to proclaim in public domain or otherwise. It is persuasion, counseling that will be helpful. You will face tough challenges 
when it comes to dealing with a system that is hierarchical. There are invisible forces that dictate an action to which you may not be privy. So if you are overruled by your seniors, that should not be taken as a setback for you. It is not a setback for you unless you are convinced that after finding the view taken by the higher authority, yes, I should have dealt with the issue a little differently. I wouldn't like to take more time. We had planned an open interactive session, but certain things are beyond control. Rain threatened us twice. First, we had made arrangements. Gupta ji, of course, and madam, of course, belong to the same fraternity. So uh, I am slightly out of tune, but they made all efforts. Then again, changed, then again. And finally, when we are here, condition outside is much better. <laughs> I am indicating to this because you will face it in your day-to-day life. There will be forces always to make your life difficult. <laughs> you can have it from me. You will think, is it for this that we have come to serve the nation? You will get that feeling. You will get a feeling also that your peers who were with you who failed to make it to this glorious position are having fat packages and some of them are rising very fast like a river in a fury during flood rising fast that should not dictate your response in the least because the rise has only one facet materialism <coughs> Since I am product of education and my profession, you are starting your career. Economic planning in a systemic manner will take all of you a very long. And economic planning, how so modest it may be, must start from day one. The moment you will plan it, you will have rewarding experience. I am still under the hangover. I find it very difficult to give advice without a fee. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, therefore, uh, I must conclude with best wishes to all of you. And please don't forget to convey my heartfelt greetings on my behalf, on behalf of Dr. Sudesh Dhankar, to your parents, relatives, and friends. I'll give you a small illustration before I take my seat. I was handling, handling a litigation of state officials who were on way to becoming IAS. Normally, for a variety of reasons and bureaucratic power, you don't charge those people for a variety of reasons. And that is by a large class litigation. A class of people will come and they will say, we have to get into IS, <coughs> and these are hotly contested matters. So in one case, where the judgment was in favor of the persons whom I represented, I told the honorable judge, who also became governor of a state, a brilliant judge, that, sir, they will gain, but I have not got fee. It was free. He said, Mr. Dunkard, you are mistaken, and you know it, you are mistaken. You are not being fair to the court. You earned lifelong fleet of people, lifelong fleet of people who would always remember you wherever you go. You may not remember their faces, but they will always remember you. I have tested that power. Wherever I go, a man will come, a district magistrate, 
or SP in a state, sir, you fought our case. Today, it is my privilege and honor to generate a deep sense of friendship with all of you. Until I meet my maker, I am confident that in any state I may go, there will be people to take care of me. And I have been always telling Gupta Ji, there has been no antidote to this bad system. Am I right? Am I right? So keep in touch with your batchmates. Never weaken that particular bond. Thank you so much. God bless you. Be ever blessed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I request Ms. Pari Bishnoi, Assistant Secretary, to present her vote of thanks. Honorable Vice President of India, sir, respected Dr. Sudesh Dhan Dhankad, madam, Secretary DOPT, Secretary to the Vice President Office, seniors, and my dear colleagues, a very good evening to one and all. I am Pari Bishnoi, IS officer from 2020 batch, born on the Sikkim Kader. It is my proud privilege today, sir, to extend vote of thanks on behalf of 179 officers from the 2020 batch of the Indian Administrative Service. We express our deep gratitude to you, sir and ma'am, for taking out your valuable time to interact with young officers like us and enlightening us with your life experiences and words of wisdom. Sir, we have finished our professional training course. We have finished our professional training course and we soon step out from this central deputation as assistant secretaries to different parts of India and take up varied roles and responsibilities at the ground level of administration. Your valuable perspectives and thoughts, sir, your candid and honest advice on trusting the seniors, working in tandem with all the staff channelizing our inner confidence to continuously work on our intellect, to follow the dictates of law, and most importantly, to be aware of the pitfalls of social media and publicity and not fall for it and serve as valuable lessons at the beginning of our career, sir. We go back today definitely with more zeal and passion to bring out the best in us for the service of the nation. I would also like to express our deep gratitude to the Department of Personnel and Training for giving us this opportunity to call on and interact with the Honorable Vice President and esteemed dignitaries. I also thank the Office of the Honorable Vice President for making all the arrangements of this call on. Lastly, thank you all my colleagues for joining us today. Shubh Sandhya and Jai Hind. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, now I request you to rise for the national anthem.